In this section, we will look at what's involved to run sales tax reports and record the filing of our sales tax returns in QuickBooks. What we need to keep in mind here is that every time you record sales tax on a transaction, whether it be a purchase or sale, that sales tax is being tracked in the sales tax accounts, which we walked through in the previous section. When you file your sales tax return, you will need to know how much sales tax you collected and how much sales tax you paid. So it's important to get clear visibility on what is going through these sales tax accounts so you can arrive to these numbers. The best way to do this is to go up to your sales tax menu and click where it says manage sales tax. Here it would show me my three sales tax agencies and notice for each one I can run a summary report, detail report, or exception report. Since all the transactions that I've been recording so far for Adams Fittings and Supply involve either GST or HST, let me scroll down to Receiver General and click Summary Report. And let's say I file HST monthly. So I need to look at my report for January 2019. So I'll change my dates on top to show January 2019 only. And basically what this report does is that it presents me with all the info I need to file my GST HST return. That is my sales figure, my GST and HST collected or collectible, and my input tax credits. If I want to see more detail as to what is in these balances, I can either click on any of these lines and it would show me a breakdown or I can hit escape a few times, click detail report, change my dates again above to show only January 2019. And it would give me a nice complete breakdown of what's making up each of my sales tax line figures. Notice that in my ITCs section, it shows the 13% HST I paid on my expenses, along with the 5% GST I paid on my purchases from Excelsior Marketing. So both sales tax rates get captured on my GST HST return which is correct. That's why they call it a GST HST return and not just an HST return. Before filing your sales tax return with your tax authority, I would always have a look at this report to see if everything looks okay. For example, if you see HST paid on expenses to a US vendor, this may be incorrect and you may need to go back into that transaction, which you can do by just clicking on the line that the transaction appears on this report, like so. So I'm going to hit escape. I'd also recommend exporting this report to Excel and saving it with your sales tax return backup data, since you may need to refer to it or present it in the event of a CRA sales tax audit. So now let's say I've reviewed my GST HST return for January. Everything looks okay and now I want to file it. What I'd need to do is click file tax return on top. I'll then see a summary of what I want to file along with if I want to make any sales tax adjustments. For example, if I don't want to claim all $12,000 of ITCs in January and instead carry them forward, I can click Adjust Return 
then I'd select my adjustment date as the end of my filing period, which is January 31st in this case. My journal entry number, which we can put whatever number we want here. My tax agency, which is receiver general, along with my sales tax item, which for this example would be HST ON ITC. Then I'd need to select which account I'd want to post my adjusted amount to over here. Now, whatever account you choose, do not post it to your sales tax accounts here. Instead, for proper tracking of ITC carry forwards, I recommend you post it to a separate asset or liability account like ITC carry forwards, even if you need to create a new one. If I wanted to bring down my ITC claim by $6,000, for example, I would hit the radio button that says decrease sales tax line and then in between the radio boxes and I don't know why the placement of it looks weird you would just type in six thousand dollars and then hit OK and your ITC claim would get adjusted automatically for this demonstration however I'm not going to record this I'm going to hit cancel I'm now going to click file return I will then get prompted to file online or file by paper. If I hit file online and click continue, QuickBooks will allow you to generate a .tax file, which you can submit on the CRA's website. For now, I'm just going to select paper or other filing method and hit continue. And if you wanted to print the return, you can do so here. I'm going to click no. Since we're claiming a refund, QuickBooks is asking us if we want to receive it now or later. Since we usually don't have absolute certainty when we'll get the money when we're filing our sales tax returns, I'm going to select receive later and I'm going to hit OK and select yes. Now to see how my sales tax return is recorded in QuickBooks, I'm going to go to the Customer Center, scroll to Receiver General, and here you'll see my refund amount. To see the actual entry, I'm going to right click, hit Open Balance at the bottom, double click this transaction, hit Edit Transaction, hit OK. And here is how QuickBooks recorded my GST HST return. Once the refund comes into my bank account, I would go up to customers, hit receive payments, choose receiver general, and then select this line here. I'm going to escape out of here. Let's go back to the Manage Sales Tax screen. So in the example I just did, I filed a GST HST return, but you can also pull up sales tax reports for your other agencies the same way. For example, to pull up my QST return summary, I would click View here, select my filing period, and review the numbers the same way. Let me hit escape. Now there's one report we didn't look at yet. That is the exception report. Basically what this report shows is a list of any transactions entered during the sales tax filing period that you already prepared a return for. So let's say for example I already closed off January when I filed my GST HST return, but let's say I forgot to enter a bill or sale dated January 5th, and that transaction has HST that I need to pick up. If I enter those transactions and then run this exception report, 
it would list those transactions and the HST that I should have in theory picked up on my January 2019 sales tax return. So once you see this report, you can decide how you want to proceed with handling these discrepancies. Lastly, I want to note that there is one other report you may want to look at that is sales tax related. If I go to the reports menu and go under sales tax, you'll see there's an unassigned sales tax amount detail report. So this basically provides you with a report of any transaction that's been assigned to a sales tax account, but not a sales tax item. For example, if I make a general journal entry, and have one of my lines go to GST, HST payable, and I do not select what my actual tax item is. That is, is it HST collected? HST I'm claiming? Is it an installment? Or what? If it's left blank, that report will indicate that this transaction has an unassigned tax item and it will allow you to focus in on making the appropriate fixes as needed. You can also view prior sales tax returns filed by clicking this report option over here. So that concludes what you need to know about running sales tax reports and filing sales tax returns in QuickBooks. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see more QuickBooks Canada videos from Simon Says It, click over there. And click over there to upgrade to the full QuickBooks Canada course.